This is Prophet Blake, and you are listening to Worship Radio International, the world's number one online Christian radio station. Hey, what's going on? This is Al with Coaching by Al right here, right on your ears, right in your eyes, right at your face. Hey, how you doing this morning? Well, I guess it's afternoon now, isn't it? It's 12, so here we are. Uh, it's afternoon, but I hope you had a wonderful week. I had a wonderful week. This week has been not without its challenges. I'm sure like you, you've had many challenges this week. But, you know, the beautiful thing about it is everything has a season. Isn't that beautiful? Everything has a season. And so what that means is that nothing lasts forever. Now, you also have to balance that because it also means, too, that Nothing that you think is going awesomely wonderful is going to last forever either. <laughs> the only thing that lasts forever is our salvation in Christ Jesus. So if that offended you, too bad. You can go ahead and turn it off if you want to. But I would hope that you would stay and listen to what I have to say today. We're going to talk about a very interesting subject. Before I do that, I have to give a shout out to my wonderful family at God's Holy Temple Church. God bless you. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. For my beautiful wife, who's also working right now, and to my own father, who's also my pastor, uh, Pastor Alfred C. Wilson Sr., even though he has technically retired, I still go to him all the time, so it's all right. He still accepts my phone calls, so I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> but to every one of you that watch every week, thank you so much. This is the time right now to go ahead and share and, and let somebody else know that Al is on the air. Coaching by Al. That's right. This is Coach Al on the air, and we are going to talk about very interesting topic today. Yes, we are going to talk about the very interesting topic. You want to you know what it is? Here's the topic. Let me see if I can say this in a way that will... Uh, inspire you to share this be sure to like it by the way as well here we go this is what it's going to be about are you doing your best you didn't want to hear that did you yeah i know i know you didn't want to hear that i didn't really want to hear it either but the question has to be asked are you doing your best are you doing the best you can do or are you kind of you know giving it Maybe 25%, maybe 50%, maybe even 75%. But are you doing the best you could do? One of the most interesting things when I was growing up in school, uh, I was always asked, you know, did you do the best you could do? When my parents would ask me and I came in with that report card that did not have those A's, you know, and, and, and sometimes didn't have those B's. And they would say, well, did you do the best you could? And I would say, yeah, I did, you know, because guilt will make you say a lot of things. <laughs> Is that right? Guilt will make us say a whole lot of things. But deep down inside, you know whether you did your best, whether you gave it your absolute all. And that's what we want to talk about today. So uh, this this might rub a little rough. So you may want to go ahead and get some Vaseline ready. You may want to go ahead and get some Band-Aids and, and, you know, whatever else you need to kind of rub on yourself because it might cut a little raw because the truth is, we know where we really are inside. We know what we have done. We know what we could do. And we need to get to the bottom of it so that we can push all of that out. Okay, so we're going to have a good discussion today. Go ahead and share it with someone. I already see some of you joining in. Brother Darrell Beavers, my brother. Love you, man. And uh, I see my sister, her husband, my sister, her husband. Uh, uh, well, her husband is Darrell Beavers. Let me say it that way. Her husband's Darrell Beavers. She's my sister by birth, but he's just as much a brother to me as if he was born into the family. So I love you, Kimmy. God bless you. And thank you for watching. Also, I see Reverend Dr. Stanley L. Scott of Salvation Temple Church. Wonderful, wonderful ministry. Wonderful man. And, and him and his wife are uh, just a beautiful couple. They've been serving in ministry and have been a blessing to many for years. And so we want to always give honor to you, of course, because uh, you, you've been such a blessing to us over the many years. My whole life, just about, you've been a blessing to my family and to our congregation. So we thank God for you. We love you. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow because now God's Holy Temple Church, for those of you that don't know, God's Holy Temple Church, the church that I pastor, is meeting at Salvation Temple at 2 p.m. on Sundays. That's our meeting place. We have two locations. The other one is at the American House in Hazel Park. That's 777 
East Woodward Heights Boulevard. And then the second, uh, the, the, that's the first service we have at 1030. And then the second service at 2 p.m. is at Salvation Temple on North Chrysler Drive. That's uh, 25,000 North Chrysler Drive in the city of Hazel Park. It's right on the service drive. Come on out and be blessed. But the first service that is there in the morning, the 11 a.m. service, is Reverend Dr. Stanley L. Scott and the Salvation Temple Church family service. So go by and visit them as well. And if you wake up too late, then you can come see us at 2 p.m. We'll be there as well. <laughs> All right. Now, let's get back to the topic. Are you doing the absolute best you can? I remember uh, <laughs> my mother, uh, Eric Taylor, God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. I remember when I was in, in middle school, I was I had a um, math homework, I think it was. And I go home. It's very difficult for me to do. I was never considered, you know, a math whiz or anything like that. So I go home and I'm trying to get out of doing my homework. You know how that goes. So uh, my mother says, what are you doing? I said, well, you know, uh, I'm just taking a break. She says, taking a break from what? I said, taking a break from doing my math homework. She said, what are you working on? I said, um, I'm working on, I don't know if it was geometry or, or algebra or something like that. And she said, uh, well, are you studying? And I said, I don't think there's any studying I can do for this. I just don't know how to do it. And she said, uh, well, then you need to go and read the Bible then if you don't think you can do it. I said, what does the Bible have to do with reading my homework? She said, well, the answer to everything is in the Bible. I said, the answer to math is not in the Bible. It is absolutely not in the Bible. Sorry, I, I, I can't even go with you on that one. And she said, yes, it is. I said, no, it's not, Mom. The answer, mathematics is not in the Bible. This is not going to help me. She said, go read the Bible and tell me what you find. I went to, this is a true story, y'all. I promise you this is a true story. I go get the Bible. I flip it open. And I point to the first scripture that my finger hits. I don't even look for anything. I just point to the first. Do you know what that scripture was? <laughs> it was 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. You know it. Study to show yourself approved. <laughs> a workman unto God that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I just put my head down. I said, oh, my goodness. She said, see, that's your answer right there. If you study, then you'll know math. <laughs> so I had to give it to her. The answer was in the word of God. So that's what I have to do. And that's many times what we have to do. We need to be able to study and give it our all before we start making excuses, before we start coming up with reasons why we can't, before we start listening to all of the uh, experiences that other people have, which may not have been positive experiences. And we don't know all of the factors that went into their experience. But just because somebody else had a bad experience with whatever they were dealing with does not mean that you're going to have that same one. So if it didn't work out for them, that does not mean it's not going to work for you. That does not mean that you can't succeed as well just because they did not. Many times people push their experiences on us, but it doesn't have to be your experience. So what do you have to do? You have to push harder. You have to go further. You have to do the best you can. And that's what we're talking about today. So uh, I see Brother J. Michael Jackson on the. Hey, how you doing, brother? God bless you, man. It's been a long time since we've talked. And uh, I miss you and your wife. It's always good to see you whenever you pop up on the Facebook page. But we got to get together, man. So uh, talking about are you doing your best? Are you trying? Are you giving it all you got now? For those of you that are watching, and I know you probably haven't even hit the like button yet, but if you can, go ahead, hit that like button if you enjoy what I'm saying, or if you need a little bit more time, it's okay. You can listen on and then determine, yeah, I think he's doing okay. I think he's not doing okay. Whatever it is, I would like to hear your opinion about it because that's how I grow, and I have no qualms, no concerns, no problems with being able to get some feedback. Even if you don't think it's positive and the feedback you want to give me, give it to me anyway. That's how we grow. Okay. I cannot see every flaw that I have, but you, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can see every flaw I have. You'll probably see it 10 times faster than I ever will. So if you see something you say, Hey Al, maybe you could try to do this a little bit better. Give me that feedback. I'll take it into consideration and we'll see how it weighs out. But are you trying your best? Am I trying my best? When you start thinking about what you really want to accomplish, have you given your all to it? 
Many times, many, we, what, what happens is we think that just because we talk about it with someone, we talk about what we want to do, that in some kind of way we are, I don't know, uh, quasi accomplishing whatever this goal is that we've set. And it's, it's not even been set. Sometimes it's just a wish list. I have a, I thought about doing this or I thought about doing that, but then what do we do? We go to somebody, we go to a friend of our, Alexis Childs, are you serious? Are you watching? Oh, it's so good to see you. God bless you. I love you. I miss you. It'd be wonderful to see you again. Hint, hint. All right. But are you trying? Okay. So you, you, you come up with an idea and I'm not talking about you, Alexis. I'm talking about all of us. Okay. But we come up with this idea of what we're going to do. And then we go around and we start telling all our friends about it. Hey, so what's going on with you? Oh, well, you know, well, I'm working on such and such and I'm working on this and I'm working on that. I'm working on, you know, I'm getting this together and then I'm going to go do this and I'm going to go get this course in school and then I'm going to go over here. And, I'm gonna, and next thing you know, three years later, all you're doing still is telling somebody what you plan on doing because you have not gotten started yet. We have not actively enrolled in what we are to do. Many of us get stopped right there. So are you trying your best? Do you know that you're trying your best? Can you honestly look yourself in the mirror or inside your own soul and say, you know what? I am giving it all I got. Now, that doesn't mean just because you're dealing with hardships and you're dealing with trials and you're dealing with tribulations and all those other beautiful churchy words like everybody else always says. It does not mean that you're trying your best. If you're trying to do something and you come up against obstacles, guess what? That's life. That does not mean that you're trying your best just because you're dealing with obstacles and you're half working on whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. I told you. Make sure you have some some rubbing alcohol with you and some 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 band-aids because this is going to be a little rough today. Brother Aaron Gladman, I see you, man. Love you, brother. Appreciate it. Did you contact the prophet yet? Co prophet Blaine? Make sure you contact him. Now, beyond just talking about what it is that you're doing, what steps have you uh, in act actively in, in, in connected yourself in in trying to accomplish whatever it is that you want to accomplish? Have you done anything? OK, here's another, uh, you know, let me before I even do that, let me give you a quote. That's one of my favorite quotes. Um, I, I know many of you probably know it already. How many ever heard of Cicero? OK, I'm not going to go into his whole life, but this is what he said. He said, more men are ennobled by study than by nature. More men are ennobled by study than by nature. What do you mean, Al? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Why do I feel like Kevin Hart doing that? <laughs> All right. Anyway, many people are born with natural talent, talent that God gives us all. Everybody has been given a talent. You've been given a talent. I've been given a talent. Regardless of whether you think you have or not, you have received a talent. Something has been placed in your hand that you are able to utilize to propel yourself forward. Something that you've been given that gives you the opportunity to be able to uh, improve your situation from wherever it is, to provide for you a standard of living, a lifestyle, something that allows you to not only have enough for your own household, but some to spare to be able to bless somebody else with. That's what your talent is for. It's to bring beauty to the world. It's to bring life and light to the world. And it also should be able to provide for you. Now, whether you choose to use that talent or not is one thing. But many people, just about everybody is born with a talent. Here's the second thing that I want to say about that. Just because you have a talent does not mean that you are trying your best. I don't get what you're saying. Jonathan Green, love you, brother, man. I hope you're feeling better. I'm praying for you, man. And... Um, so let's say you have a talent for, oh, okay, we always go to sports route, right? I'm going to say, let's say you have a talent for drawing, okay, or, or artistic expression, painting, uh, drawing, something of that nature. Now, just because you have that talent does not mean that you're trying your best when you use it. When you use it. What do you mean? Just because I can sit down personally, like let's say for me, I can sit down at a piano and I can play. OK, I have the gift and the ability to be able to play. 
The difference between me and someone who makes, say, $100,000 a year with that same talent is one person decided to study and to become all they could be with it, which means they practice day in and day out. That means they probably went to school for it. That means that they uh, put in the time to perfect their talent. It's not just something that comes to you just because. Do you know how many ta Okay, yeah, I do have to go to the route of sports because we got a lot of brothers on the line, a lot of sisters on the line. I mean, I'm sure many of you watch sports. Do you know how many talented people, and how many times have you said it yourself to a young person, how many talented people there are that have the ability to play sports or basketball or football or whatever it is the sport is or whatever the talent is, but just because you, you have that ability, there's somebody else who wants it more. There's somebody else who's really going after it. They're going to school for it. They're trying to understand it. See, that was the thing that I didn't do. I didn't have a passion for music. I enjoyed music. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being able to play, but I didn't have a passion for music. Ask me how I know. Look and see what I did during the week, Monday through Friday. I played on Sunday, but Monday through Friday, I didn't think about it. I didn't really think about it. My practice time was on Sunday when I was playing. <laughs> you see, whereas somebody else, like an incredible musician, like let's say Michael Meningal or, 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 or Mike Williams or, or um, so many more that I could name, these gentlemen went to school for it. They practiced day in and day out. Corey Henry, they practiced like crazy. And now... Not only do they have the ability, but because of their study that they placed behind their talent, now they are notarized. They are they are recognized around the world. They 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 are known for what they do in the music industry and beyond because they have given themselves the opportunity to increase what they were given. The talent that you were given, regardless of what it is, was a seed. I don't care how good the seed was. Some seeds are bigger, some seeds are smaller, but it was a seed. So the question is, are you going to plant that seed and make it grow? Are you going to make it become all that it can be? Now, the talent that I did decide to plant and study and, and water and, and fertilize and, and all of those types of things was speaking. OK, so I know I sound really dumb sometimes the way I talk here, but I, I, I don't always talk, you know, <laughs> what can I say? Detroit in the house, right? I can speak in any uh, circle that I get in. If I'm in a room with doctors and lawyers, you'll think I'm a doctor or a lawyer. If I'm in a room with scientists, you'll think I'm a scientist. If I'm in a room with salespeople, you'll think I'm a salesperson. If I'm in a room with pastors, you'll know I'm a pastor. If I'm in a room with, with some brothers down the street that's just hanging out, you'll think I'm just one of the brothers on the street hanging out. Paul said something about that very interestingly. Paul, the apostle, he said, I have become all things to all people so that I might win a few. He says, I don't necessarily do the things they do. He says, but... I've got enough knowledge and I've got enough study within my ability to speak and, 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 and give people information to where no matter where I'm at, I can fit right in. I can blend in with everybody and they can accept me. They can accept my language. They can accept what I'm sharing with them and I'll pull them to where I am because I've worked on my gift. I've perfected my gift. Have you perfected your gift? What is it that you're doing? Are you just talking about it? Or are you doing something? More people are nobled by study than by nature. How many times have you looked on TV and you've seen someone and you said, man, I could do what they're doing 10 times better than they can. Look at that person cooking. I can cook better than that. Or you read a book. I could write better than this. Or you hear a song. I could write a song better than that. Why is it that they're on the radio and you're not? Why is it that they're on TV and you're not? Why is it that, the, you, know, you know, the only reason is it's not because they're, they're, they're brighter than you. It's not because they have more talent than you. It's not because they, they uh, uh, know more than you do. The only thing is they put some work behind their talent. That's all. That is it. That is literally it. They put some work behind their talent and they pushed with it. Nothing just comes to us by osmosis. 
I know it'd be nice. It'd be so nice if it did. Oh, my goodness. I would love to just have somebody walk up to me and say, hey, Mr. Alfred C. Wilson Jr., I'd like for you to come speak at my conference. Here's a check already signed for $25,000. There you go. Come and speak on such and such date, and, and uh, then you can cash the check. That'll be nice, and I'll accept it if it comes. It's nothing like having an opportunity, and you've, you, you've had the preparation in the meantime, uh, so that when your opportunity meets your preparation, then boom, there you go. You got a wonderful event. But it doesn't normally happen that way. Let's be real. Let's be real. What means then is that I've got to put in the work. I've got to be willing to speak in places that I might have to do pro bono. I might not get paid at this speaking event. I might not get paid at that speaking event. Maybe I've got to do some some uh, speaking engagements where I only get paid a certain amount. And then as my name gets out there, as my reputation builds, as my uh, resources grow, as far as uh, people referring me, then I'll get to that place where somebody will say, OK, we're bringing in Coaching by Al to speak at our event about customer service. That can happen because I'm putting in the work. Now, I'm not trying to hear to brag on myself. I'm trying to give an example, an idea of what it means to be able to put your 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 all into your talent and don't just rely on the fact that you can do something in order to get ahead because if you keep looking and wishing and hoping for something to happen but you're not putting in the work for it then you get what you get you know and it may not be what you want all right so if that's ever been you then i want you to just put something in the comment section to say hey you know what i think i understand what you're talking about jonathan i see you say i say that all the time uh when i watch your sister cook <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect to, I, I didn't read that before I said it. So, uh, Kim, you got to talk to John about that. All right. <laughs> um, uh, Brother J. Michael said to make it to the finish line will require you get into the starting blocks and be consistent in your movement. Absolutely, sir. You remember one of my favorite quotes by speaker extraordinaire Les Brown. You don't have to be great to get started, but you do have to get started to be great. Now, there's a whole lot more to it than just starting, sure enough. But if you're going to do anything, you've got to start. You've got to start. You, if, if you're going to even win, you've got to show up, right? If you're going to have a crack at winning, you've got to show up. I cannot call uh, the ring announcer for the boxing match that I'm supposed to be in and say, hey, uh, I just want to let you know that um, I, I trained, I studied, I practiced, I ran four miles every day, I hit the heavy bag for two hours every day, I swam, I jumped rope, I ate right, and so I just want to let you know all of that. You can go ahead and name me the winner. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> the, the, the ring announcer... And the referee is going to say, if you do not get your little behind down here to the ring and put on some boxing gloves and show us what you got, then you're disqualified and the other person is going to win automatically. That's huge. If you don't do the best you can, if you don't give it all you've got, some other people are going to succeed and go ahead of you, far ahead of you automatically, just on GP, just because you did not give it your all. Now, are we in a competition with anybody else? I'd like to think not. You are in a competition with yourself. That's the biggest opponent you have. It's not about trying to be better than this person or that person or that person. It's about trying to do the best you can. And sometimes that means doing better than you thought you could do. Trying a little bit more than you thought you could try. Giving it a little bit more than you thought you could give. I have this thing that I call... Um, it's now that now this is proprietary family. This is proprietary. You can't steal this from me. This is my quote. So if you ever say it, you got to let people know that you got it from Al. That's right. You have to be what I call an overnight success. No such thing as an overnight success, right? Absolutely. What I'm talking about is for to become an overnight success means sometimes you've got to be willing to work overnight on your dream. I don't mean with your eyes closed in the bed, calling horses and cows and lambs and crocodiles. No, I'm talking about staying up late. My wife will tell you that when I was trying to learn Photoshop and I learned it from scratch, when I, when I was learning Photoshop, I would stay up 
sometimes until five and six in the morning and we had to be at work at eight. Yeah, I would, we would come home from work. This was before we had our daughter. We would come home from work. We were in our apartment and I would get on the computer. She would be watching, you know, doing something. And, and I would get on the computer and I would start learning. I would try to go through anything I could on the Photoshop tutorials. I would look on YouTube. I would try to read books, anything I could to try to learn how to navigate and operate in the Photoshop program. OK, for those of you who know what I'm talking about with Photoshop, it's a, a, a program that allows you to create graphics and and all kinds of things. And so I was learning that and I would stay up till four or five o'clock in the morning. And she say, boy, are you coming to sleep? You, do you know you have to be up in another hour and a half? And I say, yeah, I'll be right there in just a minute. I'll be there in just a minute. And I go into work and I'd be so tired. I could hardly keep my eyes open. I would feel physically sick. But. I was trying my best to do everything I could to learn it so that I could use it the way I needed to use it. And so to me, that's called being an overnight success, an overnight success. Now, if you want to know who I got that from and, and, and it was OK, he said I could use it. My uncle Kenny in California, Kenny Wilson, I love you. Thank you so much. He sent me my first program, but I had to use it. I had to, to study it. I had to do everything I could to really, really know how to use it. So that's what I'm saying. When you have a desire, you have a dream, you have a goal, no matter what it is, no matter what your talent is, utilize the talent to your fullest ability if you have a passion for it. Now, like I said, some of us have many talents, which is OK. Uh, if you have many talents, it's good. But choose one. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. I just want to see how many other people have come onto the line. I see some are watching still. Uh, Brother Aaron, I see you. And uh, Brother Jonathan, of course, is still on there. And my sister Kimmy. Yeah, that all things to all people. That's, that's huge. That's very huge. And uh, what we have to do is don't get so consumed into what the person is doing to where you get caught up into their world your goal is to go into their world and to pull them into yours okay so that's that's all i want to say about that for right now how much time do i have left man it's already past a half hour here's another quote and i'm, I'm sure many of you have heard this quote before it's one of my favorite quotes i saw this quote for the first time in a movie called uh Aquila and the bee if any of you remember that movie, uh, it's been out for a long time and I saw it years ago. But the quote stuck with me so strongly because I knew it spoke to uh, who I was and, and my lack of doing my best. And this is what the quote says. It's by uh, Marion Williams. That's the name of the author. And this is taken out of a book that she wrote. And this is what it says. If you don't mind me reading this, I do not own this. This is Marion Williams quote. It says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. That's doggone it. That's OK. Let me keep reading before I get to. I'm going to be all the way in in just a second. OK. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, Fabulous. Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. I'm going to say that again. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. That's exactly what I was doing. And I'm going to tell you my story about that in just a moment. It'll probably make you laugh, but it was absolutely serious. I'm, so let me read that last line one more time. John, I see you. God bless you, John Bolden. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just us in some of it's, it's, well, it's not just in some of us. It's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are all uh, as we are liberated from our own fear, 
our presence automatically liberates others. Is that beautiful? Is that absolutely beautiful? Yeah, I hear you, Kim. I was shrinking, too. I was shrinking, too. Growing up, you know, I was I was the church boy. And and I, I, I had this modesty about me. I had this little modestness about me that made me shrink from trying to be super duper. I didn't want to be the class clown, of course, and I, and, and I didn't I wasn't the most popular kid in school. I, I wasn't really, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of common sense at the time. OK, um, I, my, my, my sister and I. Now, I'm not saying that our household was absolutely sheltered, but there was a lot that we did not have in our home. OK, so when I had to learn about rap, I had to learn about it from kids at school. You know, I, I heard some kids down the hall would run DMC. Well, I was, you know, <laughs> I heard all of that at school. I heard about Fat Boys and Heavy D and, and MC Hammer and all of that at school. It was not in our home. All right. When I, when I learned about girls, unfortunately, that was at school, too. That's a horrible place to learn. But it was at school listening to other little boys talking. It was not at home. But the point is, is that all of those kind of things, I was very shy. I was very uh, 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 hard on myself as far as my self-esteem goes. I didn't have a whole lot of self-esteem because I wasn't really rough and tough like the other boys and I wasn't loud. We didn't use profanity in our home, things of that nature. So being in an environment in a school where that was happening every day, it made me kind of like the, the, the shy guy or the nerd, so to speak. So I grew up kind of in that same mindset, that same mentality. And what happened was anytime the teachers were calling on me to do certain things because I did it right or I spoke right or I did this right or that right. You know how you get those looks from all the other kids like mm, who he think he is, you know. So what do I do? I play down so that the teacher won't call on me so I don't look like a sore thumb and then get laughed at by all the other kids. That's what happened. That's what happened. I'm telling you what actually happened. And I'm sure many of you probably have the exact same story. But let me kind of propel forward a little bit to the event that really changed that. I had a coach named Coach Jackson in high school. Now, here's the thing. Talk about talent. Talk about ability. Talk about skill. Some kind of way I lost my, my Facebook page cut off. There we go. I'm back. Now, I taught myself how to play tennis. I taught myself how to play tennis. I had a tennis racket that was a used tennis racket. I had some tennis balls and down at our church, we had a very big fellowship hall and a large wall and nobody was hardly ever back there. So I would just go back there when they were having Bible study in one of the classrooms. I would go back to the fellowship hall and I would just hit the ball against the wall. Boom, boom, over and over and over again for the whole hour and a half that they were in Bible study. I know. OK, yeah. Sue me for not being in church. OK, so what happened was. I learned how to hit the ball so well, top spin and everything, just from reading about it, that I had the ability to be on the varsity team my first time trying. I went for tryouts because I wanted to play a sport. I wanted to play football. My mother wouldn't let me. So I said, OK, well, I'm going to play tennis. That seems safe enough. She said, fine. So I went out for tennis. My first tryout for tennis the coach put me on varsity. He said, you, 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 you're incredible. You're incredible. I could hit the ball anywhere on the court. I had top spin. I could make it drop right over the line and stay low to where the other person couldn't get it. I was crazy with it. Okay. Self-taught. This, this was not, this was not engaging my gift. This was just the talent, the natural talent that came along with being Alfred C. Wilson Jr. So what happens? We go throughout the season. I'm playing number two singles, okay? One of my best friends at the time, who's deceased now, he was number one singles because he had already been on the team for a whole year, uh, our 11th grade year, and then going into our 12th grade year. I just played for the first time during my 12th grade year. We're out playing. I'm winning games, but check this out, family. I'm telling you the truth now. I'm winning. Hey, my wife just joined us. Hey, my wife. How you doing, my wife? I love you, my wife. She working hard, y'all. She's working hard. But this is what happened. I'm winning games for the, the season, the tennis season, by default. 
How does that happen, Al? I'm winning games because the other person is making mistakes. They're not getting me out. They're not hitting a ball that I can't return. They're not uh, crushing me. I'm just returning everything that they send, and eventually they get themselves out. And that's how I won my games. Why did I do that? Because something inside of me made me think that it was rude or disrespectful. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you the truth. I'm tell I promise you I'm telling you the truth. This was my mindset at the time. I felt it was disrespectful to hit that ball so hard or somewhere on that court where the other person had to run and leap for it or, or you know, and miss and then be embarrassed when they got up because they couldn't hit the ball back or they couldn't reach the ball in time. So I just kept volleying it back and forth until they eventually hit it into the net or hit it outside of bounds. It's the truth or they missed the swing. That's what happened. That's how I was winning. I was not winning because I was giving it my all. So one day my coach comes over and he's watching me play. Normally he stayed with the guys who weren't that great. And he was with the, the, the my friend who was number one. Uh, he usually kind of stuck around with them, the kind of guys who were in between. You know, the coach doesn't really pay a whole lot of attention to them, but he knew I could play. So he comes over to me one day. I think we're playing against King High School. I went to Northern. And so uh, Jayhawks. Woo! So I, I'm, I'm playing and he sees what I'm doing. I'm just volleying back. Every time the guy hits the ball, I hit it back to him. He hits it back to me. I hit it back to him. He hits it back to me. I hit it back to him. He hits it back. I hit it back to him. That sounds pretty boring, right? That's when my coach got frustrated. He was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So the next time the ball was out, because the other guy knocked it out, he says, time out. He comes over to me. <laughs> He grabs me by my shirt collar. Now, Coach Jackson was not a big guy. He wasn't too much bigger than I was. But he was grown, and of course, I was young, so in my mind, that meant I got to respect my elders. I got to be calm. I got to be meek. I got to be mild. You know. So he grabs me by my shirt collar, literally, and drags me off of the tennis court. He puts me up against the fence, he says in, in colorful language, which I will not share with you, what are you doing? I said, I'm playing. He says, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm playing. I'm, I'm playing tennis. That's what I'm supposed to be doing, right? He says, no, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. I said, what am I supposed to be doing? I thought I was supposed to play tennis. He says, no, I see what you're doing. He says, you're letting that other person uh, default to make you win. I said, I don't, I don't get what you're saying. I knew what he was talking about. I don't, I don't, I don't get what you're saying. I don't, I don't understand what you're talking about. He says, you're letting that other dude get himself out. You're not trying to get him out. Why are you not playing? I said, coach, I'm playing the game. I'm hitting it back, ain't I? I I'm not missing it. He says, no. Your job is to get him out. Why are you not hitting the ball somewhere where he can't get it? I literally said this. Laugh at me all you want to. It's the truth. I literally said I didn't want to make him feel bad. <laughs> this is true. This is so true. I'm telling you the honest to goodness truth. I said I did not want to make him feel bad. He said, Wilson, he says the object of the game is to do better than he does, to get him out. Your job is to hit that ball somewhere where he can't get to it. Your job is to hit that ball and serve it so fast that he can't catch it. Your job is to make him pass out from trying to run for the ball. He said that's the object of the game. And this is what he said that changed it for me. He said, if you're not giving it your best, you're not being fair to him. Because he's trying as hard as he can. If you don't try as hard as you can, then you're not being fair to him. He said, now get out there and play the game. He said, and if you don't, I'm going to beat you. He, I'm not going to finish what he said because he was very colorful, as I mentioned. So after that, I played like I knew I could play. I played and, and, and oh my goodness, my serving I could put a spin on a serve that could just, 
it hit the ground and go sideways. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I was good. And, and so then uh, when I hit the ball back, if he was able to return the serve, then I could hit the ball straight across and make him run for it until he either passed out or he just couldn't catch it in time. I, I, I could place that ball anywhere on the court I wanted to. I should have had a, a scholarship to go to college with it, but that's a whole other story. I won't get into that as to what happened. Coach Jackson from Northern High School. 1993 but not enough of me being on my soapbox that's what happened that's the reason why i'm saying that last uh quote that i gave you why in the world would you not try your hardest and allow yourself to be as incredible as you are you're amazing i'm talking to you right now you yeah you i'm talking to you me yes you i'm talking to you you are wonderful you are amazing you are brilliant you are talented you are beautiful the bible even says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made why would you not give it your all sometimes it takes certain things to happen to us in life to get us to the point of understanding that we need to try to give it our all sometimes it's too late many times people realize what they could have done when they're in their last years of life and then they try to go all out for it. Well, I'm not saying it's too late then, but if you have the opportunity now, give it everything you've got. If you have a talent for cooking, cook. Don't worry about what Gordon Ramsay and all these people are doing on TV and the Food Network. Cook. Because before there was a Food Network, before there was a, a, a chopped show, before there was all these different types of things, there were people still filling up Restaurants. There were people who were still famous all over the world. Wolfgang Puck, I never saw him on Food Network, but I heard about him long before there was one. You understand what I'm saying? So try with everything you have. If you have the ability to draw, if you have the ability to speak, if you have the ability to, to, to even, well, maybe, maybe, I don't know, whatever talent you have. Some of you have the ability to sing like nobody's business and nobody knows about it. It's because... You have to discipline yourself. It's because you have to now put some study with your talent. Be amazing like God made you to be. It's okay. It's all right. Because you know what? The moment you allow yourself to be amazing, just like she said in that quote, Marion Williams said in that quote, the moment you allow yourself to be amazing, you give other people the permission they need to be amazing. Why? Because somebody's watching you. Somebody's always watching you. You are always being watched. People in your family, your children, your nieces, your nephews, your cousins, your co-workers, your neighbors, your parishioners that you go to church with. Everybody is watching whether you think they are or not. And the moment you break through because you gave it the time necessary, somebody else is going to be inspired and say, doggone it. If Al can do it, so can I. My goodness, if Aaron can do it, if, if, if Jonathan can do it, if Kim can do it, so can I. Somebody is waiting. If Darrell can make it happen, I know I can make it happen too. That's what somebody is waiting for. So many times in church world, especially in our church, many talents came forward just because somebody else had an opportunity to show their talent. Many talents came forward. So somebody says, hey, you know what? I can do this, this, and this. And then somebody else says, well, I can do that too. I remember we didn't find out people who were artists until we got ready to remodel our church. Once the, the, the remodeling happened, then people started stepping forward. Well, I know how to paint. I know how to decorate. I know how to drop ceiling. I know how to lay tile. I know how to, 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 to drywall. You do? Why didn't you ever say anything? I don't know. It was Listen. Put yourself out there because the moment you put yourself out there, you just might liberate somebody else. Somebody else may have been waiting for an opportunity. And sure enough, they yes, they need to try on their own. But you might be the catalyst for them starting whatever they need to start. I don't necessarily get into Greek mythology, but you could be their muse. You could give them inspiration. You could give them an idea. You could, you could do something that could not only put you on the map and support your family and sustain you, but you just might bring somebody else out of what they're in because they might, you know, like my sister. My sister's an incredible chef. She can cook like nobody's business, Jonathan. She really can cook. She's incredible. And guess what? Now, other people have said, you know what? 
uh, you need some help? My sister says, yeah, come on, help me. She gives them an opportunity to help. Now they find out that they enjoy cooking and their talent emerges. You see what I'm saying? That's kind of how I got into cooking. Just from being around my sister because she was so talented with it. You know, so I would watch some of the things she does and I'd watch this and watch that. Made me want to improve on it myself. And now here I am. I'm, I'm not saying I'm. You know. <laughs> I, I was about to say I, I didn't beat. No, I haven't beat my sister yet, but I keep trying. I keep trying. I'm not trying to beat her. What I am trying to do is be the best I can be. And, and I think I'm doing OK so far, but that's just in cooking. Now, for speaking, for example. That's like I said, that's that's the talent I believe that I was given to be able to change people's lives with to be effective. What is your talent? Whatever your talent is, go ahead and put it in the comments section. We got a couple minutes left. I just want to see some of you, whatever it is. What did Kim say? Uh, get out there and play the game. So relevant. So right. Rico, you're watching. God bless you. Rico Williams, my dear sister from CTN days, Christian Television Network days. It's so good to see you. What are you doing? What's going on with you right now? OK, so that's what I want to tell you today. Do the best you can. Give it your all. Remember the quote. More people are noble by study than by nature. Just because you have a gift, just because you have a talent, just because you have an ability. Don't rely just on that to get you anywhere. You have to do something with it. Do I need to go to church on you? Very wealthy, prosperous man gives his servants some some talents or some money, in other words, talents. Just because they had the talent did not impress the boss when he came back. I'm going to let that one marinate for a second. Just because they had the talent when he returned did not impress him. The one man who he gave the one talent to who said, you know what, I'm going to hide this in the ground because I don't want anything to happen to it. Uh, I'm just going to wait until the boss comes back. And then when he comes back, I'll give it to him. See, not a scratch on it. Everything is good. He was not impressed with the man giving him his money back the same amount that he gave him. He called him evil and he called him wicked. Think about that. Think about that. What talent did God give you? Are you just sitting on it and saying, well, you know, uh, I, I enjoy doing this, but this is just for me. This is just something I like to do. Uh, what is he going to say to you when he returns? And you say, well, I didn't want to you know, go out there and, and, and flaunt it and show it off to the world and everything. Here you go. Not a scratch on it. Just as when you gave it to me, like it's never been used, brand new. Is he going to call you evil and wicked? Or will he be impressed with you like he was with the man who said, you gave me five talents or you gave me five pieces of money. Now I invested it. Here's 10 pieces of money to give back to you. He said, now you are a good and faithful servant. Mm, A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. Woo! That's what we have to do. Give it all you got. Give it everything. We'll talk about it more next time. A couple minutes left, and I'm ready to, to wrap it up. Let me tell you this. Don't come down to the end of your life and say to yourself, you know what, I really should have given it my all. I really could have invested a little bit more time in learning what my skill was. If you're good at working on cars, find and, and it's, if it's a passion of yours, something you love to do, study. Find out more about it so that you can maximize your ability. If you like law, study it. Take some courses on it. Find at least at least figure out what it is to be a, a lawyer or a paralegal or something, whatever area you want to work in. Go after it. Don't just say, well, you know, I got some skill, you know. Don't don't be a jack of all trades kind of person, you know. No, master something. Master something. You'll be happier. You'll be more fulfilled in life. You keep hearing me say that at the end of every broadcast. Why? Because that's the reason why I am uh, sharing this information with you, because I want you to be happy. I want you to be fulfilled in life. Don't just go through the motions. No, no. Be happy. Be fulfilled. Be, be able to smile from the inside, whether nobody's around you smiling or not. It doesn't make a difference if anybody's smiling. I'm smiling. Why am I smiling? Because I'm here. Why? Because I'm living, because I'm giving it my all. I'm enjoying it. Is that going to be our story every single day? Probably not. But make it 
your story most of your days. All right, that's it. I'm done. I hope you enjoyed. Please remember, if you like this, be sure to put hit, hit that like button. Be sure to share it. Be sure to make comments because that lets me know that you're interested. And if you feel like, you know what, I am getting a little something out of this. I would like to donate something uh, to this program. You can do that. You can, if you have Cash App, get Cash App. It's a great way to share money. Get Cash App and then go to Coaching by Al LLC. That's what you put in, the dollar sign and then Coaching by Al LLC. And any amount of money you wish to give would really be a blessing to help keep this going. A million dollars. Million dollars is wonderful. I'd be more than happy with a million dollars. And that would give me enough and some to spare to be a blessing to somebody else. You see what I'm saying? So it's not just about what we get, it's about what we give. So please feel free to do that. If you need me to come pick it up, call me. I'll come pick it up. I <laughs> I can pick it. But either way, either way, uh, be sure to like it. Be sure to share it and look forward to it next time. Matter of fact, put a notification on your phone to let you know that Coaching by Al is popping up and getting ready to come on. And then you won't miss it and share it with somebody else. I love you all so much to my wife, to my little lady who's out there in the room playing really hard. My little Nala Bean. Uh, she's out there. I can hear her stumping all around. I love you all. God bless you. And I will see you next time week hey this is deandre ford and you're listening to worship radio international